Computers are really great at doing repetitive work. And Swift makes it easier to do work a fixed number of times or once for each item in a set, array or dictionary. Let's start with an example. Let's say we have an array like this one. Let platforms equals iOS, macOS, tvOS and watchOS. We could loop over every item in that array and print each one out using code like this. For OS in platforms, print Swift works great on OS. And that's gonna loop over all the items in platforms, putting them one by one into OS. Now we haven't made that OS constant anywhere. It's made automatically by the loop and made available to us only inside the open and close braces. You can't use it outside the loop. Inside those braces is a code we want to run each time the, the loop goes around for each item in the array. And so our code here is gonna print out Swift works great on iOS, Swift works great on macOS and so forth. First, Swift will take iOS out of the array, put it into OS and then run the print statement where OS is the iOS, Swift works great on iOS. It'll then take macOS out and put that into our OS, making works great on macOS, then tvOS and then watchOS. Now to make things easier to understand, we give these things common names. The code between the open and close braces, this we call the loop body. We call one cycle through the loop, i.e. one value inside the platforms plus one print call. That is what we call a loop iteration. This will have four loop iterations because there are four items in the array. Finally, we call OS the loop variable. This exists only inside the loop body and it will change to a new value in every loop iteration. Now I should say the name OS isn't special. We could have said for name in platforms, Swift works great on name. It's exactly the same. It could even be something ridiculous like for rubber chicken in platforms. It doesn't matter as long as the name for the loop variable matches the way it's used inside the loop iteration code, the body, you are fine. Now, what you'll find is Xcode is really, really smart here. When you do auto completion, it'll help you out. You can see here in Xcode, I have four OS and platforms. If I had written instead for plat, you'll see it completes for platform in platforms. It recognizes uh, platforms is plural and suggests a singular name platform for the loop variable. Just press re return or enter to select Xcode autocompletion. Anyway, rather than looping over an array or set or dictionary to get the same each time, you can also loop over a fixed range of numbers. For example, we could print out the number at the five times table from one through 12, like this. For i in one dot 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 12, print five x string interpolation i is string interpolation five times i. Now, some things are new in there. Let's, let's pause and examine them more uh, carefully. I've used here the loop variable i, which is a common coding convention for a number you are counting with. If you are counting a second number, you might use j. If you're counting a third number, you might use k. And if you're counting a fourth number, perhaps pick some better variable names. What you're seeing here, one dot 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 12, that's called a range. And this instance means all numbers between one and 12, including one and 12 themselves. In Swift, ranges are their own unique data type. So when this code runs, I'll be one first, that's where it starts. So it'll do five times one is five times one, up to 12, five times 12 is 60 and then the loop will end. So it should get the full five times table when it's run, boom. You can also put loops inside loops if you want to, often called nested loops. So we could say something like, uh, for i in one through 12, I'm gonna print out, this is the i times table. And then inside that loop, I'll start a second loop, for j in one through 12. And now I'll print out uh, space, 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 a bit of, bit of tabbing on the side, j times i 
is J star I. And after that, I'll add an empty print call. And now, what happens when we press run? We're going to get lots of times tables. So we have uh, I times table here, or one, sorry, then two, then three, then four, and so on, five, six, all the way through up to the 12 times table at the very end. So a nested loop. Again, there are multiple new things here, so let's just break it down. Uh, there's now a nested loop here. That's a loop inside a loop. And that's when we count from 1 through 12 using i each time. And for every time we go around, we also go around again inside 1 through 12. And so we're, we're going to count 144 possible loops here. 1 through 12 inside that 1 through 12. Then here we have print with nothing being printed, no text or value being passed in. And this will just basically print a new line. It'll just start a line all by itself. That's what creates these nice empty line breaks here. Just makes it look nicer on the screen. So when you see x dot 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 y, like one dot 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 12, for example, you know it creates a range that starts at the left-hand number, one, and count up to and includes the right-hand number, 12. Swift does have a similar but different type of range that counts up to but excluding the last number. And it's written as dot dot less than. So very, very similar. So to demonstrate that, we'll say down here, for i in one dot 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 five, print, uh, oops, <laughs> counting from one through five with i, and I'll copy and paste that, and below, I'll change this to be less than, and this to be from one up to five. And then press play, and you should see now, hopefully, boom, one through five, one, two, three, four, five, then one up to five, one, two, three, four. So a different output. So I pronounce one dot 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 five as one through five, and one dot dot less than five as one up to five. And you'll see the same wording elsewhere in Swift and Apple's documentation. It's a standard way of referring to these two kinds of ranges. If you're curious, uh, counting up to but less than is really useful for things like arrays, where they count from zero. So you might count from zero up to less than the count of the array, because they all count from zero, so otherwise it'd be off by one, a dangerous place to be. Before we're done with four loops, there's one more thing I wanna mention. Sometimes you want to run some code a certain number of times using a range, but you don't actually care about the loop variable. You don't care what's in there. You don't want the I, the J, the platform, the rubber chicken, whatever it is, right? In this situation, you can actually replace the loop variable with an underscore. For example, I could say var lyric equals haters gonna. And then for underscore in one through five, lyric plus equals space hate. And then print lyric. And when that runs, we're going to see hate is going to hate, 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 hate. Yes, that is a Taylor Swift lyric from Shake It Off written in Swift code.